When I think of 3D printing, I think of small objects. But why? Why not a couch or a table? If you don't have anything printing for a few days, why not print something big? Let it use that time. I stumbled across this video of a guy 3D printing a chair. What caught my attention wasn't that it was a cool design or that I haven't seen a 3D printed chair before, but was that he did it using a common household 3D printer. Not some massive printer that very few people have. He showed that with the right design, large functional furniture can be downloaded and printed. I want to know, will 3D printed furniture be a practical option in the near future? To answer this question, I need to answer a few sub-questions. Can it be more comfortable? Can it look good without post-processing? How quick can it be made? And how cheaply can it be made? For this project, I'll be using one of the most popular desktop 3D printers, the Bamboo X1 Carbon. I'll be using three of them to speed up how long it takes, but will give print times as if there's only one printer. For filament, I'll be using PLA for the cost and TPU to attempt to make it more comfortable. The only other material I'll be using will be super glued to attach everything together. To start, I need to come up with a design. I have a pre-picked spot I want to put it so that covers the size. Then I want to have features that take advantage of 3D printing and customization, such as a big sweeping curve. I want the back to fit snugly against the wall without a gap. So for this, I designed an indent for the trim around the ground and for the plug, cables, and panels already in place. Because every piece has to be printed, I cut it into pieces smaller than the build volume. For the front pieces, I put a slight fillet in order to hide the connection points. I'm thinking this is going to be a good place to check my phone, do a bit of work, or eat a snack. For the table, I want the similar aesthetic and put a rubber mat at the very top to match the couch. I then cut the design into printer size chunks. I designed this after making the couch as an afterthought, but I ended up liking this design much more. Once the design is set, I needed to figure out how to make TPU comfortable to sit on. What infill pattern and density is most comfortable? How much does it matter? It turns out it matters a lot. For testing, I printed out small test tubes of various infill. The first thing I noticed was that some infill patterns make noise when compressed. Every 2D pattern I tested had a distinct crushing sound when compressed, whereas 3D patterns like the gyroid and 3D honeycomb are silent. I also found that if you make a large hole in one of the walls, the TPU acts very different. Without a hole, the print is closed off. The air has to compress as it escapes small imperfections in the print. Whereas if there's a large hole, the air can quickly rush in and out. This isn't the exact effect I've been going for in the seat cushion, but I think it's really cool and reminds me of those air-powered rockets for kids. Maybe a future project or something one of you may be interested in making. After some comparison and seeing how every percent of infill costs about $20, I decided on using 2% gyroid. So for 25 large TPU pieces, costing about $35 a spool and 3 days 16 hours to print, the total cost for the top layer came out to $194. I overspent on this layer mostly by making the relatively expensive TPU really thick, but I want to try it anyway. For the middle and base layer, I spent a lot of time optimizing the cost. The only question I have is how cheap can I make a cube that holds my weight? When spread over 50 pieces, every percent infill, wall, base, or top layer costs around $10 each. Keeping the default settings makes it cost over $1,000 and takes over a month to print. Because the force of these pieces is always directed downward, honeycomb infill works great. Surprisingly, very low infill was able to hold my weight, but because the walls didn't have much backing them, they dented easily. So I had to increase the walls to three loops to keep them strong without much backing. This let me drop the infill even more as the walls became structural. I found that I can get away with only two base layers as they will be staying on the floor. I could also completely remove the top layer of the bottom piece because the middle layer will be covering it. For the base layer, I ended up with 1% infill, 3 walls, and no top layer. For the middle pieces, I used 2% infill to support the top layers and 3 walls. This brought the cost down to about $280 for the bottom 50 pieces, or about $550 a piece. Again, this is pricier than I initially wanted it to be, but still a huge reduction on my initial estimates. Before committing to buying almost $500 of filament, 
I want to do one more test with these settings. Other than these pieces being kind of small, it's surprisingly strong and comfortable. I live in an apartment, so I want to stay away from sanding and painting, but I still want it to look good. For testing, I used whatever filaments I had available, but for the final print, I want to choose the material colors as if I'm choosing paint at the store. Making one longer twirl quarter helps cut down the cost and ensure consistency. For color, I picked Bamboo Labs Matte Bone White PLA and Gray TPU for AMS. Now time for a full week of printing. The total print time was 13 days, 17 hours, 40 minutes, or about four and a half days when split between three printers. I would sometimes let the print sit for a few hours, so for me it took about a full week of printing. The grand total for all the filament was $470. I didn't track electricity costs, but it was likely pretty high. The glue also cost a few dollars. So was it worth it? Should you print your next couch instead of buying one? No, but that wasn't the goal. The goal was to discover whether this would be viable one day. I think the answer to that is yes, a clear yes. My first sub question was, can I make it more comfortable? I think it is. It's not as comfortable as a regular couch, but more comfortable than a rigid chair. I edited this entire video on it and have been using it for over a month. I think other people can ask that same question about this couch and answer yes, and make it even more comfortable. I don't see a limit on how innovative people will get with their design and ability to improve it. Can it look good without post-processing? I don't think it looks half bad. And I think other people can make one look way better. Besides using glue, which was more of me being lazy and not wanting to design 100 plus joints, this was straight off the printer. No additional work needed. Can it be made quick? Kinda. Okay, two weeks is a long time to print something, but these printers are twice as fast as my previous printers, which were twice as fast as my printers before that. I fully expect the next generation of printers to be twice as fast as these. In a few years, that may be a week of printing, then a few days, then quicker than shipping one to your house. How cheaply can be made? $470 is pricey. I spent a couple weeks experimenting to bring down the price from over $1,000 and stopped it good enough. I think with more refining, right now something that size can cost about $300, which puts in the price range of most cheap couches. And if filament recycling and reusability catches on, that price plummets way more. So do you think 3D printed furniture will ever be practical at home? Let me know what you think. I have a goal of trying to print everything I own that's not food, electrical, or fabric. So if you like 3D printing projects like this, Leave a like and subscribe so I know I'm on the right track. Thanks for watching. Now go make something cool.